I saved the best for last, episode 99 of the 100 Artist Challenge, my favorite artist of all time, Mark Silvestri. When people say Marlon Brando, everybody thinks of the Godfather or uh, Chubby Brando, but I think of a young Brando yelling Stella or doing his fugitive kind masterclass in acting opening. So a young Brando and I think of a young Silvestri, especially that first run on Uncanny X-Men where he was inked by Dan Green. And this issue is just genius. Storm relives the Barry Windsor Smith issue. So Silvestri redraws some of those scenes in his style and adds the current story on top. It's a super complex idea, but the camera angles, the space for the word balloons, the emotions, the dynamic poses, the perspectives, the way he draws the rain, all is done to perfection. I think this issue deserves an Eisner Award. But of course, Silvestri kept developing his style. And since uh, Jim Lee was the king at that time, he was kind of pulled towards that, especially in the early Cyber Force image days. But I will forever go back to his early style. So let's give it a try. And I think as a true homage, I should try the Forge and Storm in Dispose. For this series, I've been diving into all these back issues I remember from my teens. And the stories just go straight to the heart. I'm not sure if it's a huge coating of nostalgia that's doing that, or if writers back then were just more comfortable putting some more soap opera feelings in superhero comics. I tried getting into the Grant Morrison generation, but it just didn't work for me like this, even though Frank Whiteley's art is super good. By the way, check episode 58 in this series for my take on Frank Whiteley's art. Maybe it's kind of like your first girlfriend and then all the others after that pale in comparison because the first time you're just infatuated with being infatuated itself, not really the person. <laughs> so yeah, the first time you get into comics, it just imprints that style as the best, I think. Anyway, enough armchair philosophy. 80s comics ruled, and especially with giants like Claremont, Silvestri and Green, period. So yeah, in this style, um, the proportions are very realistic. You can see, especially from Storm's body. One thing though is that maybe the heads are a little bit longer and the neck of Forge as well. Okay, so that's it for the sketch. Now for that Dan Green super loose inking style. Making sure to leave spaces. And a big difference between thin and thick in the lines. Just some slight feathering here in the pants. Okay, keeping it super loose on Storm's head. All right, flat coloring. Um, let's try adding a background real quick. Taking the view from the window of Forge's mansion. And now for the aging. I will actually make a, a detailed video on how to do this. Um, so subscribe and hit the bell if you don't want to miss that one. But in short, you have to have a CMYK file, then uh, copy the drawing four times. And using the blending options, you separate those four into just one of the CMYK. And then with the move tool, you just slightly nudge each of those layers to the side and you get that misprint feeling of uh, where you see like a bunch of yellow on the side of every color. And then to get that dotted feeling, you go to color halftone, although your page should be at least 600 dots per inch for that. And then I usually just get the black lines and put them over that one more time and boom. Now I was a bit lazy on the background and I just enlarged it instead of drawing a lot of it. So you know, the black in the background is too thick compared to the front. So I made this version too. And I think this is, yeah, I like it. Maybe she could have been turning a little bit more towards him. Let me know what you think. Drop a like if you think I succeeded. And don't miss the final big episode where I do Alex Ross. See you.